Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're going to make a visual weapon bullet tracer. It will be a visual line that we're going to spawn from the weapon shoot position to the target position, and then we're going to add some extra effects. Alright, let's get started. So I have my scene here with my character, I can move it around, it is looking at the mouse, and when I fire it plays a basic animation. Okay, so let's go into our game handler script. Now in here I have a basic setup, I have the camera follow script, which we created in a previous video. It is being set up to follow the player position and the player handler is handling the player movement and playing the animation when the left mouse button is down. Okay. So on my player handler script, I have an event called on shoot that is being fired every time the player shoots his weapon. Now in here, this event is being fired with on shoot event args, which contains the gun end point position and the shoot position, which is the position of the mouse. So just for testing, let's do a debug dot draw a line from our gun end point position into the shoot position, just to see the values that this event is firing. Let's draw the line in white with duration of 100 milliseconds. Okay, make sure gizmos are on, and there you go. We can see the line is going from the weapon endpoint right there into the mouse position. Okay, great. So our values are being sent correctly. So in here, in my textures, I have a weapon tracer texture, which is just a basic line that fades out at the beginning. Now this is what we're going to spawn from the shoot endpoint position into the mouse target position. So into our code here, let's remove our debug. So in here, I'm going to create a function, call it private void create weapon tracer. And this function will receive a vector three for our from position and a vector three for our target position. And when we shoot, we are going to call our function using e dot gun endpoint position towards the shoot position. Okay, so now in here, we're going to need to calculate the direction between these two points. So let's make a vector three, call it dear. It's going to be the target position minus the from position and make it normalized. Okay, so we now have our direction. Now, in order to display our weapon tracer, we are going to use a quad that will display our tracer texture where the lower part of the texture is located at the gun endpoint and is rotated towards our target position. So in order to create that quad, we are going to use the world mesh class that is part of the CodeMonkey utilities, which as always you can grab from unitycodemonkey.com. If you want to know how to create a mesh through code, you can check out the video on that. So world mesh, let's go into world mesh and create. We're going to create on the from position. Onto our rotation, let's leave it at zero for now. Mesh width. Let's put it at six, mesh height, let's say just a hundred. We're going to need a material for our weapon tracer. So let's say weapon tracer material, and we'll grab that later. Coordinates, just leave it as null and 10,000 on the offset so that it shows up on top of everything else. So up here, let's make a serialized field, private material, call it weapon tracer material. Okay, so let's convert our direction into an angle. There's also a function on the utilities for that. So utils class dot get angle from vector float, and we're going to send our direction. This is going to be our Euler Z, which we're going to send in here. So this should be displaying a mesh, spawning at the front position and pointing towards our target position. So let's create our weapon material, create a new material weapon tracer and this is going to be unlit transparent drag our texture and drag our reference okay let's give it a shot and there you go it's being spawned it's spawning in the middle right on top of that and obviously the rotation is incorrect so let's solve that go in here so our Euler z is going to be minus 90 Okay, the rotation is now correct. So let's also solve the size of our mesh. Instead of being 100, it's going to be 
a float for our distance, which will be vector three dot distance between our from position and the target position. This distance is going to be the height of the mesh. And for our spawn position, tracer spawn position will be our from position plus the direction multiplied by our distance by half. So tracer spawn position will be the midpoint between the front position and the target position. So let's spawn it in there with a height of distance. Okay, let's see how it looks. Okay, there you go. The size of the mesh is correct, the rotation is correct, and the position is correct. Okay, great. And I can still move and everything still works. Awesome. Now, as you can see, the size of the mesh in there, it is looks pretty decent but if i put it together it looks quite a bit squished in the beginning there this is why we are using mesh instead of just spawning a regular sprite so that this way we can change the scale of our texture and make it look good even when the size is very small so let's do that now so back in our code here and first we are actually going to duplicate our material so we don't modify the original Create a new material, call it temp weapon tracer material. Will be a clone of our weapon tracer material. So now on this temporary weapon tracer, we want to modify the set texture scale of our main texture. And the scale will be a vector two. For a width, we want the exact same width. But for our height, this is what we want to modify based on our distance. Now, the texture has a height of 256 pixels. So in here, we are simply going to divide our distance by 256. So this is obviously going to be dependent on the scale of the units in your game. But in this case, essentially, it means the entire texture won't be visible if the distance between the front position and target position is 256 units. If it's half of that, if it's 128, then this texture will display half of it. So let's use this material instead of the original and see if that issue has been resolved. Yep, okay, there you go. As you can see, when I fire away, you can see a lot of the texture, but if I fire very little, you just see the very beginning of the texture. So this looks much better than just having a giant thing pop up right there. Okay, great. So now obviously we want to we want to clear up these tracers after some time. So let's go into our code and make it disappear after a while. In here, we're going to have a float timer. And let's say we want it to disappear after 100 milliseconds. And I'm going to use the function updater from the code monkey utils. I'm going to create it. In here, just timer minus equals time dot delta time. And if timer is less than zero, then I'm going to destroy the world mesh and I'm going to return true to destroy the function updater object. So in here, if not, we're going to return false. Okay, let's test it out and see if our tracer dis is disappearing. And yep, there you go. It shows up and then it vanishes. I can move, shoot around. Okay, great. So now this obviously looks very simple. So let's add some frame animations to make it disappear a bit more softly rather than just disappearing all at once. Okay, so in order to do that, I have a tracer sprite sheet in here that we were previously just using this one and now I have several frames to make it slowly disappear. So let's create new material and call it weapon tracer sprite sheet. Make it unlit transparent, drag our texture, go in here, switch our reference for this one, okay back into our code here. Now in here, in order to do some basic frame animation, we are going to modify the UV coordinates. So let's go into our world mesh dot set UV chords. And I'm going to send it the coordinates of, to start off, just the first frame. So the first frame will be an X of zero, a Y of zero. The width of a single frame is 16 and the height is 256. So this will display just the first frame of that sprite sheet. So let's add in here an end for our current frame. And let's add a float for our frame rate. And let's put it at 0 
which is 60 frames per second. So on our timer, let's set it at that. And now in here, when the timer is under zero, we are going to increase our frame. We are going to reset our timer, increase it by the frame rate. Now, if our frame is the final frame, if the final frame is currently visible, we are going to destroy our world mesh, return true to destroy this object. If not, then we're going to display our current frame. So world mesh dot set UV coordinates, and we're essentially going to send this. So instead of zero, it's gonna be 16, which is the size of each frame multiplied by our current frame. So when we are at frame one, it is gonna spawn, it is gonna display with an X of 16. Sp on frame two, an X of 32, so on. Okay, so let's see if our basic frame animation is correctly working. And there you go, it is switching the frames and now it doesn't look as janky as before. Okay, great. So now let's add some more effects. Let's add a shoot flash on our shoot position. So I have a texture here, which is just a basic yellow circle that signifies the flash and we're going to spawn it and vanish it very quickly. And here let's do create shoot flash and we want to spawn it on the gun endpoint position. So go in here, private void, create shoot flash on our vector three spawn position. In here, since we don't need to mess around with mesh UV sizes, we're just going to spawn a basic sprite. So world sprite equals world. I got create. Spawn it on the spawn position with our sprite for our shoot flash sprite. Which I'm going to go up here. Make it a sprite and shoot flash sprite and add a function timer to destroy it after a while. So world sprite dot destroy self after let's say 100 milliseconds. Okay, so let's add a reference to our sprite and test it out. Okay, there you go. That makes the effect a bit better. All right, great. And finally, let's add some basic screen shake. What's intensity of 0.5 and last for 0.05. Okay, let's see the final effect. And there you go, we got a basic weapon tracer with a basic screen shake and popping out some effects so to make it look very nice. As always, you can grab the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Okay, see you next time.